Did you know that the disciple Peter was a lost man before the New Testament began? I'm going to show you the proof. Matthew chapter 16, the, one of the key scriptures for Roman Catholics out there. Matthew chapter 16, beginning in verse 15. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Jesus speaking here, in other words. Verse 16, And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the Catholics, of course, teach that Peter was the first pope. Jesus is building the church on Peter. Uh, no, <laughs> Jesus is the rock that the church is built upon. You can see 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. You know, so it's not Peter. And I'll show you the proof of that as we continue. Verse 19, And I will give unto thee the, king, the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. And from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. He's calling, you know, telling Jesus, you don't know what you're talking about, essentially. Uh, verse 22, or excuse me, verse 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Kind of a rough thing to say to the first pope, don't you think? Um, get thee behind me, Satan. But a more important thing is we can see there, and that is, um, was Peter saved? Is there anywhere in one of the Pauline epistles where a Christian is called Satan? No. No. Why would Jesus call Peter Satan? Because Peter was lost. Okay? You say, oh no, he was a, he was a Christian. Uh, they weren't called Christians until Acts chapter 11, verse 26. The disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. He wasn't a Christian. He wasn't in Christ yet. See, non-dispensationalists and, and other heretics like that, they try to say that the gospel's always been the same. I'm going to show you it's not. Those men, those disciples there, they were doing what they were supposed to be doing in that time there, that dispensation. Sure, absolutely. But they weren't saved. Let me show you the proof. Luke chapter 22. Turn in your King James Bible to Luke chapter 22. And it's very important that you have a paper King James Bible. And you need to look this stuff up. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Luke chapter 22, verse 31 through 34. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter the cock shall not crow this day, before thou shalt, thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Christians aren't supposed to deny Jesus Christ. I'll tell you there's times that you might keep your mouth shut or whatever else, but I don't believe a Christian is going to deny Jesus Christ. But what's more important there, um, verse 32, when thou art converted. Jesus didn't say, hey, you're saved already. You're, you're born again. You got eternal security, Peter. He didn't say that. He said, when thou art converted. Why? Because Peter wasn't saved yet. You understand? Jesus hadn't died on the cross. The blood hadn't been shed. Peter was not saved at that point in time. He's not converted. Got to get a hold of that. Luke chapter 22, verse 54. Let's read here. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. And after a little while another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. 
and about the space of one hour after another confidently affirmed, saying, Of a truth, this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what, what thou sayest, and immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew. If you read another passage, uh, another one of the gospel accounts, Peter actually begins to curse and swear to prove that he's not saved. Hmm. Interesting. Mark of a lost person. Somebody can't control their mouth. I didn't say they don't occasionally let a word slip out when they hit their you know, hand with a hammer or something like that. You know, I'm talking about somebody that just cusses and has no conviction about it. They're not saved. Verse 61, And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Peter was not a saved man, but he still had conviction there. He still was bothered by the fact that he just denied Jesus Christ, not once or twice. Three times he denied him. After bragging and saying, I'll never deny you, he denied him. Not the mark of a saved man. He needed to be converted. You see, people in the Old Testament didn't have the Holy Spirit sealed. They weren't sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption like we are today. In Ephesians chapter 1, it talks about that. They didn't have that promise there. You got to have right divisions in Scripture or you make, make a mess of the Bible. The gospel's not always been the same. Luke chapter 20, or excuse me, John chapter 20. We'll go there next. John chapter 20, verses 6 through 9. Then cometh Simon, Simon Peter following him, and went in to the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. And yet you get these non-dispensational heretics and they'll say, they were always saved by the death, burial, and resurrection. Well, if that's true, then how come they didn't understand the scriptures that he would rise from the dead? The gospel for today is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they're there in the tomb and they didn't understand it. Hmm. How about that? Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 37. Peter's preaching here. Peter has been converted at this point in time. The Holy Ghost came upon them in their early, you know, on the day of Pentecost there. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Um, is that the gospel we preach today? Well, if you're Church of Christ or some other cults, they'll take Acts chapter 2, verse 38 and make that the gospel. It's not the gospel. Or if you're a hyper-dispensationalist, you'll say, that's the gospel. Peter kept on preaching. He just kept on preaching the, the, you know, repent and be baptized. That's what he preached the whole time. Um, no, that's not true either. Um, I'm going to show you the proof. But uh, Galatians chapter 2, I'll show you another thing here. Galatians chapter 2. See, the book of Acts is a transitional book. Again, hyper-dispensationalists, or they don't, you know, Jesus hasn't opened their, their understanding of the Scriptures, so they don't get a lot of this stuff. They're lost. But uh, when you read the book of Acts, there's, they're speaking to the Jews. They're going to the temple, the sign gifts, all that stuff. It's transitioning. And when Paul shows up, the gospel is given to him. Okay? And there's, you know, the Jews are doing some, they're making some mistakes and things as they're going to the Gentiles and whatever. And I'll show you that Peter, even now that he's saved, he got saved, I believe, uh, in Acts chapter 2. There he's, well, he's saved, but then the Holy Spirit comes upon him in Acts chapter 2. I'll say it that way. He is converted at that point in time. He's there to strengthen his brethren, like Jesus Christ told him to do. But 
they're first sent to the Gen or to the Jews to give them one more chance to accept Jesus as their Messiah. And as they're there and there's sign gifts and all the other stuff happening in the early part of the book of Acts, it begins to transition away from the Jews because they're rejecting Jesus as their Messiah and it goes to the Gentiles. But the Jews are still having some struggles with how to deal with these Gentiles, including Peter as a saved man. Uh, Galatians chapter 2, beginning in verse 11. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I was stood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Paul speaking here. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. When I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature, and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified." Peter was afraid of looking bad, losing face, so to speak, in front of the other Jews. And so he's withdrawing himself from the Gentiles, those, those that are saved, and saying, well, they're unclean, I don't want to be around them. And Paul rebukes him. Now there's a teaching out there among Islam and among a bunch of other wicked people, and they actually teach that uh, Peter rejected Paul, and Paul was a false apostle and things, and all stupid nonsense. I rebuked that whole thing, proved that it was false. Uh, years ago. I have a study on YouTube here about that. But um, Peter, again, uh, it's, it's important to note that, you know, he's a saved man, but he's making mistakes. Again, he's not the infallible Pope here. But uh, just wanted to bring that point up. But let me show you something here. You see a contention, in other words, between Peter and Paul. And I'm going to show you later on that Peter did not uh, reject that rebuke that Paul gave him. Let's go next to, to Ephesians chapter 3. And this is this passage right here is the absolute death knell, death knell against uh, non-dispensational heretics. They can't handle this because it plainly debunks what they try to teach. Ephesians chapter 3 verses 1 through 7. For this, Paul, or for this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word. It's not a time period, the dispensation of the grace of God, okay? Uh, God always dispenses grace to man, all right? But Paul's saying, this is a special thing that was given to me. Let's continue. Verse 3, How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Now here's, here's the key, verse 5. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. They weren't preaching the same gospel. It wasn't made known to them back in the Old Testament. All right? You got to get a hold of that thing. Verse 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. So Paul is saying this gospel was presented to me by revelation. He didn't say, well, Peter knew about it and John knew about it and we all kind of knew about it. He said, Jesus Christ gave this thing to me first and foremost. Now, Paul and Peter, they were at odds. You know, Peter was rebuked by Paul in front of everybody, made it, you know, he was really embarrassed, you know, this newcomer Paul and whatever else. And so they're fighting, right? No. Let me show you one more place. 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 through 18. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Peter writing, and he says, As our beloved brother Paul, this been revealed to him, he's written this to you. He didn't say, Hey, don't listen to Paul, okay? We have some disagreements. You know, Paul, Paul wasn't right. He, he's just kind of, he's saying, Our beloved brother Paul has been showed this stuff. Peter was now preaching what? 
Paul preached. They weren't going around preaching two different Gospels, Peter to the Jews and Paul to the Gentiles. That's nonsense. That's what hyper-dispensationalists believe, like Cornelius Stamm and a bunch of others, a bunch, bunch of other liars like they are. Verse 16, As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, under their own destruction. Perfect description of non-dispensationalists. They have to go through and they have to rest the scriptures and they'll take things where it says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And they'll say, well, see now dividing actually means accurately handling. It's supposed to be kind of you divide, you know, and, and they'll, they'll, they'll rest it. Anybody knows what dividing means. It means separating. You're dividing. You look and you say, what Paul was preaching is not the same thing that Jesus was preaching. Why? Because Jesus told him to preach this stuff here. What Jesus Christ came to do is put off for a little bit of time. And on the dispensationalists see they're unlearned and unstable. They're lost, in other words. And they come out and they'll say, oh, well, no, you know, Peter was saved. He was a Christian before Christians were called Christians in Acts chapter 11. He was a Christian before Jesus died on the cross. They had the same gospel back then as we do today. You're nuttier than a pecan pie if you believe that. Why on earth would Jesus even have to die on the cross if they're getting already saved by his death on the cross? I mean, these, these idiots literally teach that salvation, Adam and Eve's salvation was the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. I mean, they, that's what they believe. I'm not exaggerating. It's crazy. What's it leading to? Their own destruction. Their own destruction. They're going to hell. Non-dispensationalists, those that are truly understanding the whole dispensational thing, those that can understand it, if you're non-dispensationalist, you're hellbound. You're going to burn in hell. Verse 17, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. That's what a non-dispensationalist will do to you as a believer. You start listening to them too much. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Was the apostle or was the disciple, Peter, was he a saved man when uh, Jesus Christ was walking on the earth and he was his disciple walking around? Nope. Um, you're not ever going to see a Christian in the body of Christ ever called Satan. Um, you're not going to see Christians denying Jesus Christ. I mean, there have been stories about, you know, what the Catholics were torturing Christians back before the Reformation, you know, and, and you'd get one and, and they would, uh, or I should say maybe during the Reformation, you'd get one and they'd say, recant of your beliefs or whatever else, and they would. And before long, they'd say, I have to undo that. I got to stand by my belief in Jesus Christ and the Bible and against the Catholic Church. And they'd get put to death. They'd get tortured horribly. When you get saved... Uh, you're not going to turn on Jesus Christ and reject him and deny him. But Peter did three times. Why? Because he wasn't saved yet. He wasn't converted. Doing what he was supposed to do at that time period, but they didn't have eternal security at that time period. They didn't have a promise of the Holy Spirit being there to indwell their body and never leaving. They didn't have that. That's why back in the Old Testament you have David back in the book of Psalms saying, take not you know, your your." spirit from me or holy spirit from me basically you know they didn't have eternal security back then all right and uh here's the more important thing because you see non-dispensationalists they'll get you back to the old testament they'll try to confuse you back there but what their real agenda is to get you confused about the future you see they're going to go into the time of jacob's trouble and once they get there they're going to say i'm eternally secure salvation today is by grace through faith you want to say the prayer? You don't even have to say the prayer. You just go right in. And guess what? Now you're in there, you're eternally secure. You can take the mark of the beast and you're fine. Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 5, if any provide not for his own, especially they for a, uh, of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So you better provide for your own. You see? So you can take the mark of the beast. We're eternally secure. See? There's no dispensational changes. The gospel's always been the same. That's where they're going with their whole movement. 
I've been dealing with these heretics for years and years and years. I know what their little playbook is. Okay? Non-dispensationalists are called closet Catholics. Right now, they're still in the closet. But when the catching up happens and the Catholic Church says, you see, you see, this is what we've been trying to stop all this time. This inter free interpretation of the Bible, all these heretical sects. Now you look and see what this horrible thing is that they did. They were discontent, whatever else. So they went, they left, and they took the little, all the little babies with them. We need everybody to come back to the Catholic Church. There's only one religion in the book of Revelation. They're all worshiping the beast. There isn't this thing of all the New Age, all the, all the religions come together, to, you know, one super religion where everybody does their own thing. That is nonsense. That is a stupid, heretical teaching. There's one religion, only one, and that religion is the Catholic Church. And that's where they're going. And every single one of these new IFB, little, little disgusting Satanists out there, little ministers of Satan, they're all going to go full-on Catholic after the catching up of the body of Christ. And they're going to, they're going to say, they're, they're literally coming out and saying, we want to destroy dispensational teaching. You know why? Because it stands in their, in the way of their ultimate agenda. To get people to say, you can worship the beast, you can take his mark, and you have eternal security. Salvation is always the same. See? That's the agenda of these people. Don't fall for them. Okay? Was Peter saved? Before Jesus died on the cross? Nope. Was he saved afterwards? Absolutely. Um, and the gospel that he preached early on is what the Lord told him to preach. But a transition when those Jews rejected Jesus Christ again for the second time. They rejected him again as their Messiah. So the Lord said, okay, I'm going to put you off for a while. So, I do hope that uh, you've followed along in your Bible. I hope you've been challenged by these things, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.